In the last video, I explained how, um, or explained that uh, magnetism causes electricity, and electricity causes magnetism. Um, so it's important to try to understand how it is that these actually work. So a lot of people call these hand rules. I'm going to show you uh, sort of what I like to think about hand rules. So first of all, I'm going to uh, give you hand rule number one, and that's going to be um, that's going to be basically a, a current through a wire. So if we have current through a wire, then we can use this hand rule. This is helpful just as a way to remember which direction things actually go. So the key here is uh, that, well, we might have a left hand rule. That's what LHR stands for. Or we might have a right hand rule. But the key here is that there is no left-hand rule for this one. And the reason is because we use conventional current. And because we call it conventional current, we only use our right-hand rule. So this right here only works if you have current running through a wire. And in the IB, at least, we use what's called conventional current. That just means we're going to use our right hand. Okay, so the key here is to, well, first I have to try to draw a hand. That's going to be really tough to do. You're going to see I'm not an artist. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to draw then uh, four fingers. There we go. Along with a thumb going up and then down. Some sort of hand here. Now it's important, I'm just going to draw the uh, fingernails just so we can sort of see that my hand is like this. See, it's supposed to be like that. You can probably draw this much better than I can. But uh, in this case right here, I'm going to show you uh, what each of them is doing. So your thumb represents the current. So the direction of the current, that's your thumb. And your fingers, your fingers are going to sort of curl. So I'll say this, the fingers curl in direction. I'm writing really crooked here, of the magnetic field, so the B field. In other words, the magnetic field. So in this case right here, it would be like this right here. So the magnetic field would be going around it like this. Now this is all in 3D. This is why we use our hands to do this, because these things are what we call orthogonal. In other words, things are 90 degrees to each other. So we needed, you know, we have to try to understand something in more than two dimensions. Keep in mind, the board that I'm using here is limited to only two dimensions, right? Up, down, left, right. But I also have out of the page and into the page, so to speak, or out of the board, into the board. So you have to imagine that when you're looking at your piece of paper, things can be up, down, left, right, or out of the paper, or into the paper. Those are the different directions possible. So I'll give you a quick uh, little example here. So what if, um, yeah, what if, for example, I have a wire? I'm just going to do it off to the side here. But if I have a wire, um, I can actually draw a wire that's coming straight out at you. Okay, this is a wire that's going uh, out at you. And what you do then is you consider that the current in the wire is going straight out of the page. The current could also be going into the page if I want it. And it turns out the convention is to draw a little dot for out of the page. And if the current is going into the page, or if the whatever you're looking at goes into the page, we draw an X. So in other words, if it was going into the page, we draw it like, like this. The current in the wire would be into the page. And the trick I used to remember this is I, almost, I, I imagine like it's an arrow, either you know, like an actual sort of you know, bow and arrow kind of thing. If the arrow is coming towards you, well, there will be a point that's coming toward you first. Whereas if the arrow is going away, it could be like the fletching of the arrow might be in an X. Of course, it doesn't have to be. It can be a triangle. But uh, that's just the way I try to remember this. Uh, that's what I was taught by my teacher, and it always worked for me. So imagine you have a wire with the current coming out of the page. Well, if the current's going out of the page, then I can use my right-hand rule to figure out which direction the magnetic field will go. So it turns out I use my right hand, like I just showed here, my right hand, and my thumb points in the direction of the current. So in this case, out of the page. And look at the way that my fingers are curling. My fingers curl sort of that way. In other words, counterclockwise. And if that's the case, then what I can do, I can then draw my magnetic field lines going like this. 
which means if I placed a uh, magnetic compass right here, the north of the compass would face up. If I placed my compass here, it would face that way. If I placed it here, it would face down. If I placed it here, it would face right. That's what this really means. So this helps me to figure out stuff with currents if there's uh, magnetic fields or to figure out the magnetic field if there's a current. So that's the first hand rule. Uh, now the second one has to do with solenoids. And a solenoid is just a, um, just a coil of wire with uh, current going through it. So if I look at that then, that could be my other one. So this will be solenoid, this right here was current through a wire. So a solenoid then is just a, a loop of wire. And again, there's no left hand rule for solenoids. There's only a right hand rule. And the way the right hand rule goes is this time, um, I'm gonna draw my hand like this. So I'm gonna try to draw a hand. And going one, two, three, four, going out. That looks totally weird. It looks like a giraffe's head almost. You can imagine like a little, you know, hello, and this could be like a big long giraffe here. But no, this is supposed to be a hand. It's just a bad version of one. There's the fingernail. Oh my God, that's a big fingernail. Uh, it's a big thumb. But in any case, notice I'm not drawing the fingernails though, because I want them like this. So in this case right here, what we do is the thumb, the thumb is the magnetic field line. That's the direction uh, that a north of a compass would point. And your fingers curl in direction of current. That's pretty cool. So what we can do then is we can take a look at this and try to understand what will actually happen here. Um, so I could give an example. My example could be, uh, maybe I'll do it off to the side again like I had done before. Maybe I have something like this. Maybe I have a little magnet, uh, sorry, not a magnet, but uh, some piece of metal. We're gonna call it ferromagnetic, which means it can be magnetized. So my little piece of metal there, what I'm going to do is wrap some wire around it. So I'm gonna draw it like this. I don't know if that was clear at all, but I'm trying to draw the direction of the wire. So I'm trying to have the wire wrapped. Remember, this is three dimension here. So I'm trying to draw a little piece of metal. Maybe it's a little uh, cylinder of metal. And I want my wire to be wrapped sort of around this end, then behind it, then wrapping around it, then behind it, then down. Okay. Now what I could do then is um, I can then run current through it. So maybe I have a battery connected here and maybe this way right here, maybe that's the current. So maybe I put the current this way. Well then the question would be, what will happen to this thing? It, will, it turns out if it's a ferromagnetic material, that means it will become magnetic depending on the current. You might have heard this, uh, this is often called an electromagnet because if you run electricity through this piece of metal, it becomes magnetic, right? So you might have seen this like in, um, well there's lots of examples of this, but Let's say in an old movie, I remember seeing a movie with a car chase and the car was driving through an old junkyard, uh, you know, a place with lots of other cars. And of course, as he's driving along, all of a sudden his car just gets sucked up to the top of a crane. So in other words, there's a crane that just sort of lifted the car up. And what tends to happen at those places, they have a giant version of this happening, a giant ferromagnetic material. They wrap it with a lot of wire and they run a really big time current through it. It turns out that will magnetize this piece of metal. It'll become a magnet. What's cool though is if you stop the current, it no longer becomes a magnet, so it'll drop things. So you can imagine that being pretty useful, right? You could pick up something with a ferromagnet, uh, with an electromagnet, sorry, and then as you uh, run the current through it, it, it's magnetic. And if you stop the current, it drops the metal thing that you're trying to pick up. That's pretty cool. But in this case right here, then I could figure out, okay, if I run the current this way, my question might be, which way will the north point on this magnet? Because this will make this a magnet temporarily. And the question might be, which way will north point on this thing? Okay, that might be the, the question I'm looking at. So, whoops, um, what I have to do then is look at my right hand rule for solenoids and take a look at the way that this here is wrapped because I need my fingers to be wrapping in the direction of the current. So that means then if you look at 
Which way is the current going? Well, it's actually going down this way, and then it goes behind it, then over, then behind it, then down. So that means my fingers are curling this way. That's the way the current's going. Current's not going this way, that would be if I reversed it. Okay, so right now, if you look carefully, the current is going around it this way. So because my fingers curl this way, look at my thumb. My thumb points to the right, doesn't it? So with my thumb pointing to the right, that means that's the direction of the magnetic field, the B field as we often call it. So if the magnetic field goes that way, what that tells me then is that there's a north here and there's a south at the other end. There's going to be a temporary magnetic north and south because, remember, we draw field lines for magnets or magnetic field lines are the direction that a north of a compass would point. And if this is a north and I put my compass right here, the north of my compass would point away from that north. It doesn't like it. Now, of course, if I uh, reversed the direction of the current, so what if uh, in my battery I just switched the battery direction around, then what would happen is this north and the south would flip because then my current would be going this way. And that means my thumb would be that way, so there would be a north there and a south there. That's very useful, I think, in order to help to understand um, electromagnetism in this case. So those are the first two hand rules. There's a third one. Uh, but these are the first two that helps you for current through a wire or solenoids, which is a coil of wire.